What's up guys, I'm Ricky Glazer and welcome to the basic timeline editing tutorial. We're going to be using Premiere Pro, but as I said before, the principles we talk about can really be transferred into any program, whether it be Final Cut, Vegas, you know, whatever, Movie Maker, iMovie. I'm kind of assuming, you know, you have the basic sort of knowledge of your program. Like, you know how to make a new project and you know what settings your camera records in Mini DV or HDV. You know, you know how to film relatively well and you know how to set up the camera manually, hopefully. Maybe not. But, you know, I'm kind of assuming you know, you know, what project settings to use. You know what your camera records in, whether it's NTSC or PAL, depending on your country. Um, so I'm just going to open up a project I got right here. Uh, this is a video on my other channel. Um, I'll upload it to Colorful uh, Media as soon as um, I hear back from the the band manager of the submarines. Uh, I was trying to get the permission to upload it. I'm pretty sure he'll give it to me. Just waiting on his reply. So um, here we are in the project. And um, right here on the left, we've got all my files. Now it's really handy to just keep all your files in one folder, same as a project folder, you know, to avoid like problems happening later on, you know, offline media. It's just a lot better to keep it all in the one folder. Um, another thing you'd like to do is Premiere, depending on your computer, you know, you can't always have the best computer. Um, your computer, it might, you know, lag a bit or it, it might freeze up sometimes. So you're going to want to be saving a copy of your project. So 4A, I'll just save it right here, 4A copy. Yes, I want to override. Um, you know, sometimes you'd be working on a project and then if it'll freeze, and then you go back to open the project and you've lost obviously like you know, since the last time you saved 10 minutes work or whatever and then you go into your project and it's like oh since it's froze this is corrupt and then you've got nothing so it's really handy to just save a copy um, you pretty much always want to do that alright so now let's talk about editing the first thing you're gonna wanna do when you're editing is choose a song before you do anything before you put anything in the timeline you're gonna want to choose a song. You're gonna want to know what kind of edit you're gonna be doing, whether it be like gangster edit, like a techno edit, or like a chilled, good vibe edit, which is what this is. You know, you really want to know what you're gonna be doing and choose a song first. Another very important thing is when you put in your song, it might come up like this. You really just always want to see the waveform. We want to see what's going on in the song. You know, we just want to see everything. So once you got your song, like the most important things, what makes a good clip is generally the, the song, whether people like the song, and how well the clip flows. And making the clip flow is very easy. It's just it has such a great effect. You know, it's just really easy. All you have to do is just edit everything. You know, you can almost do everything. Just you want to edit everything on the beat. So you can see here we've just got a basic cut from shot to shot and from shot to shot again here. So we just have a few basic cuts. Now, you know, if you just had them without the song, I'll show you. You know, it doesn't look too special. It's just like, yeah, it's like just cutting. But now with the song, you know, the way we've positioned these clips to change, it's just right on the beat, and it's just it just flows really well. Like, we'll have a look. So if we see here, this is where our change is. This is just the flash, holding the flash frame a bit longer. And builds up and then flashes and changes. So we really, you know, it has a really strong effect. Like that's the main thing you do when you're editing. It's very, like it takes a lot longer, but that's just, you know, that's what you want to do. You never ever just want to put in your clips and then just slap on a song at the end and just not even check the beats and just render it out. That's the worst thing you could ever do when making a clip. You never ever want to do that. So if I just check, I'll show you the effect, you know, if it's not on beat, it just, just doesn't flow at all. We'll have a look. See, it's just like, you know, it's just stupid. It's just like a bit silly. So I just control Z, undo that. So, you know, you really want to be editing on beat as much as you can. You can, I would say, 90% of the clip you can edit on beat. And you can edit, you know, the start of the clip, the end of the clip, the pop of the trick, the land of a trick, you know, landing on a rail of a trick. There's so many things you can edit on beat. And I'll just show you another example. 
um, at the end of this clip, we've got you know the nice silhouette shot, and that's right on beat again. So you can see it just as it hits that, it just changes. So the cut can be the cut's very effective, you know. And now I'll show you an example of a land. He walks up and then he checks down the land. So as you can see, just on the such a long time now, just right on there, just really nice flow, you know. You're gonna be want to you want to try and do that as much as you can in a clip. You can never do it too much. Just all the time, you just want to be doing that. Um, another thing, you know, with transitions, the traditional cut, just like editing on beat, you know, it's really effective. You know, you want to do it as much as you can. I, you know, you can just see the cut and the fade. You know, your fades just here, video transitions, dissolve, cross dissolve, you know, you just drag it in. But yeah, you never, pretty much, oh, I don't want to say never, but you really don't want to use these, you know, cliche transitions, you know, movie maker transitions or whatever. They just, oh, they look really bad and really tacky. Like I'll show you, 3D motion cube spin. You know, it just looks, ugh. Yeah, you know, you just you don't want to be doing that. You just stick to the cuts and the fades, and you know a few you can do like the more advanced things. But just for now, just don't do those cliche ends. Just stick to the cuts and the fades. Uh, just a couple other things I want to touch on is um if your preview is lagging here, in pre this is just strictly Premiere. If your preview is lagging here or your computer is lagging when you try to preview. You can just do a bit of a right click or on a Mac control click, but I thoroughly enjoy right clicking and just go to draft quality. It might be on high quality or um, automatic quality, but just make sure it's on draft quality. And if you're wondering what these red lines here, when you got all green lines, it means it's rendered out. If you got red lines, you know your preview might be a bit more jerky. So before you um, watching it, you just want to hit enter and just render the files out, and then they'll be a lot, you know, play a lot smoother. Um, one other thing, if your computer's lagging a lot, it might trick you, and so it might, you might see the land, and then the sound will come later, but in reality the sound is earlier, it's just your computer lagging, that's why you want to look at the waveform, so you can match it exactly, so you know, even if there's lag, I know that's exactly on the beat, well, that's a dissolve, but you know, that's exactly on the beat. Um, one more thing, Premiere tip is uh, if you render it out, here's my audio level right here, and you can see it's nice and green. Um, if you're getting these turning red, it means your audio is too loud, and then when you render it out, you might get this really nasty crackling, you know, and you don't want that, it sounds really bad. And um, <clears throat> I'll just show you how to solve that now. If you go to Window, Workspace, we're currently in Editing, that's this default layout, and you just go to Audio, and you can just, you see, I've already done it here, you can just turn it down. If I turn it back up, you'll see, when I play, oh, it doesn't go red, but certain things, it might go red. So you just turn it down to make sure we're not going to be getting any of that nasty crackle. So I'll just go back to editing now. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this first tutorial. You know, it's, it's not, I, you know, it's not really, this isn't really a tutorial. You know, it's more just like a guide, a loose guide of how to edit a skate video. You know, the coming up like later in the ramp slammer tutorial, it's gonna be a lot more like do this, do that, do this, do that. But um this is a lot more of a guide, loose guide. So um uh, just to sum up, always pick the song first before you edit. That's the first thing to do. Um, edit everything you can on beat, almost everything. And um yeah, just don't use the cliche transitions. Um, that's pretty much all. Um, the ramp slow mo tutorial will be coming next. I might have to do like a mini tutorial in between of just keyframing, just so you get a really basic understanding of keyframing before we uh, do the ramp slow mo, just so you have a bit of a better understanding of what's actually going on. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, subscribe, and the ramp slow mo tutorial will be coming soon. Alright, catch ya.